praise Yudhe Wapay and praise Yudhe Wapay. Bait Noon Sophie, Yudhe Wapay Royal Family. Welcome to our Power of Ten, where we utilize the 10 step scale for our daily Bible scriptural reading. Praise Yudhe Wapay. Today is month three, day four. In our Holy Hebrew Sacred Solar Year of 6024 FC, which means from creation, I am Queen Vashti Atara Yisrael, Baf Yahweh, and I will be presenting today's Bible study class. Today we're going to be reading from the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 9. Before we begin, we do want to begin with prayer. We always want to ask our Father for guidance as we move through our Bible study. We want guidance as we move through our day. And we want guidance from our Father, Yudhe as we serve him in every royal and righteous way. We just want his guidance in all that we do. And so we are going to begin with prayer. I'm going to ask King Yismaya if you will please lead us in prayer this very early morning. King Yismaya. Praise Yudhe And praise Yudhe Wabe, Beit Nun, Sophie Yudhe Wabe. Okay, royal family, let us stand and face the east. Clear our heavens and concentrate on Yudhe Wabe and Yudhe Wabe, Beit Nun, Sophie Yudhe Wabe. As we spread forth our hands from whence we came. Let us begin. O Yudhe Wabe, God of our salvation, save us and gather us together and deliver us from the heathens, so that we may give thanks unto thy holy name, and glory unto thy praises. Blessed be thy holy name of Yodewabe and Israel forever. Of Yodewabe, let them be confounded that persecute us, but let not us be confounded. Let our enemies be dismayed, but let not us be dismayed. Bring upon our enemies a day of evil, and destroy them with a devil destruction. Of Yodewabe, Forgive our fathers for breaking your laws, and please forgive us for breaking your laws. And help us to never bring shame upon thy great name, nor reproach against our works. For surely we have turned ourselves unto thee, O Yodewabe, trying to be upright. And as we confess our faults, please grant us protection against all of our faults, and cleanse us of our secret faults, and guide us to the best of morals, for surely our prayers, our sacrifices, our lives, and our deaths are all for thee, O Yodhi Wabe, Selah, Tesalah, Avenu, Sabah Semaim, Yikadas, Samaritra, Tarbo, Mahkutekor, Yarse, Razamka, Tabah Semaim, Kain Baaretz, Elakim, Kuganu, Tainlanu, Hayon. Uslakranu, Al Katarinu, Timo Solikim, Gamanatnu, Lago Timlanu, Vel Tebenu, Liade, Nisayo, Kim, Kasenu, Mihara, Kilata, Amamaha, the Hagivara, the Tefret, Leolame, Olamim, Sela. And we thank the O Heavenly Father, Yurewabe, our eternal and everlasting King who has so mercifully restored our souls within us. And let everything that has breast praise Yudhe Wabe, and praise Yudhe Wabe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wabe, the Messiah, Selah. Praise Yudhe Wabe, and praise Yudhe Wabe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wabe. Yes, and we will do that. We will praise Yudhe Wabe, and praise Yudhe Wabe, Beit Nun Sophie, you, hey, Wav, hey, royal family, again, welcome to our Power of Ten. We're going to be reading from the book of Matthew. Now, before we begin the reading of chapter nine, I always like to start with the introduction. There are 66 books to the King James Bible. This is the Bible of choice. This is the Bible that we're utilizing, the King James Version. There are 66 books, and a lot of publishers of the Bible do place introductions before reading of the particular book. 
And that's important. I know a lot of times we may have skipped the introductions in the past, but now that we're becoming more detailed and we know that this Bible is written cryptically, you know, lots of hidden messages and codes and symbolism throughout the book. And so the reading of the introduction can be very beneficial and helpful in that it will give you some background knowledge for that book or that chapter that you're reading from. Information that you may not have gathered on your own is in the introduction. Now, I'm going to read from an authorized version of the King James Version that was made specifically for Hebrew Israelites by the Temple of Love Publishers many years ago. I'll be reading from this particular book for the introduction. Now, the introduction in your Bible, if you have one for this particular uh, chapter, this book of Matthew, um, will read differently from the the Bible that you have, that you have, because you have a different publisher, most likely. But nevertheless, the introduction that you have in your Bible will be very helpful to your understanding. All right. And so, oftentimes, we read from the introduction from several different Bibles so that we can really get some good understanding and background knowledge. So, I'm going to read, like I said, from this particular Bible, and also. Understand that we are in the New Testament today. We'll be reading from the New Testament, Matthew. It's, Matthew is in the New Testament. And the New Testament is really symbolic. Our father, Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe, told us that this New Testament, in fact, is his story. And we know, yes, this was written many years ago. But also, remember, this Bible is written cryptically. There are hidden messages and symbolism and codes. So this book, this book of Matthew right here and all the other books in the New Testament, is really it really represents our Father's good works. So when we read from the New Testament, we put it in today okay, for us because we know that our Father, Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe, is that promised Messiah, that the Messiah that did come. And so when we're reading these words, especially the red lettering, we know that this is the Messiah talking, and the Messiah is our Messiah, is Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe. He's the deliverer. When you look up the word um, Christ, it leads you right to, that's a Greek word. However, the Messiah is Hebrew. The one that many call Jesus and in fact, is the name in this particular Bible and mo- a lots of Bibles. That's a Greek term. That's a Greek name. And when you study it, it does lead you to the Hebrew word Mashiach, which means Messiah. And the the definition is he's the deliverer of Israel. And so Israel, true Israel, are the twelve tribes from Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, and the so-called black men here in America, we are of the tribe of Judah. We were the ones that were carried away captive. Jeremiah 13, 19 will also let you know that we were sold into um, bondage and we'd be, we'd be in captivity. Deuteronomy 28, probably around 68, if not 68, let you know also that we would go into, uh, be carried away captive. And so, and we were put in slavery and in a strange land. This is our story. So the Messiah comes from this same seed, the tribe of Judah. And so this is all about, the Old Testament is all about our true history, Israel, and our, uh, you know, keeping the laws when we were blessed, but then breaking the laws, disobeying, disobeying the laws caused us to be cursed and under the oppression of other nations. And so that's been our story. But the Messiah does come to save us from this type of behavior and to return us to the tree of life. We've been eating from, like everyone, we've been eating from the tree of good and evil. That's because Satan did deceive the whole world in Revelation 12, 9. So we were eating from the tree of good and evil. That causes curses because the evil is there. And so that wasn't a good thing, but that was what we've been eating from because after Cain killed his brother, his righteous brother Abel, he was given a sentence of 6,000 years. 
to prove that he could do well. Yahweh said, I'll give you this 6,000 years, and you prove that you can do well. And you know what happened? He has not done well. And so his rulership begins to self-destruct in the 6,000th year, and it's heading for total destruction. And that is why the Messiah comes, so that he can put us back in our rightful places and positions. And we have to be righteous, though, in all of our dealings. And Judah was chosen to be the ruler in the first Chronicles 28 and 4 forever. But we are not in those positions at this particular time because we were breaking the laws and curse. And so the Messiah comes to save us from breaking the laws, to reinstate us. But we have to rule righteously and we have to follow these laws. And so we understand that when we're reading, we're really reading about our story. And we apply all of this now to us. And then now it makes sense. When you insert yourself in, you can see how this makes sense perfect sense. If you're following along on all these Power of Ten classes, you should be understanding that this does make sense, and this is certainly our true history, the so-called black men here in America. But this message is for all nations. All nations should know that it's time to leave the tree of good and evil and return to the tree of life. And we do this through the teachings of our Father, you Hey, Wav, hey, Beit Nun Sophie, you, hey, Wav, hey, it is our duty to go and tell all nations that it is now time to come to the tree of life, stop breaking the laws, and be blessed. And this is what we're doing now. All right, so now back to the book of Matthew, the introduction, so that you now understand when I do get to the name. Jesus, you will know, you will hear me insert the name Yahshua or Yudhe Wavhe Beit Nun Sofi Yudhe Wavhe, and this is the Hebrew term. And you know the Old Testament was written in our native tongue of Hebrew, so I'll insert it. In fact, the letter J is one of the newest letters in the alphabet, less than six hundred years old. So of course, when you do the math, you recognize that hmm, a letter that's just six hundred years old could not possibly be ascribed to a man who walked over 2,000 years ago. So right there, that should throw up some red flags and some questions should um, be asked. And so now you're gaining some information that will help you to make a decision as to what you want to do in these last days. This tree of good and evil is coming down, and you have to determine for yourself, do you want to take on the truth or do you want to continue in the falsehoods. There's been plenty of falsehoods throughout the tree of good and evil. Okay, so we're going to begin with this introduction, getting back to St. Matthew. Just wanted to give you a little background information so that you are able to understand where we are in our understanding of what is going on here. All right? The Gospel according to St. Matthew, the introduction. Author, abundant early historical testimony ascribes this gospel to Matthew the publican, also called Levi, by Mark and Luke. A former tax gatherer, as a former tax gatherer, Matthew was well qualified to produce such a gospel. His business knowledge of shorthand enabled him to record fully the discourses of Yeshua. His acquaintance with figures is reflected in his frequent mention of money. His interest in large sums, Matthew 18, 24 and 25, 15, and his general interest in statistics, for example, uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 17. Composition and date. Welcome to caller. Composition and date. The great frequency of citations and allusions to Matthew found in the Dedicate, Epistle of Barnabas and Ignatius Justin Martyr, and others attest its early composition and widespread use. The literary connections of this gospel must be considered in its relations to the other synoptics 
and also to the statement of Papias that Matthew wrote the words in Hebrew, in the Hebrew dialect, and each one interpreted as he could. Eusebius, this is from Eusebius Ecclesiastical History 3.39. Many have explained Papias' statement as referring to an Aramaic original from which our Greek gospel is a translation. Yet, our Greek text does not bear the marks of a translation, and the absence of any trace of an Aramaic original casts grave doubts upon this hypothesis. Goodspeed argues at length that it would be contrary to Greek practice to name a Greek translation after the author of an Aramaic original. For Greeks were concerned only with the one who put a work into Greek. As examples, he cites the Gospel of Mark. It was not called the Gospel of Peter. And the Greek Old Testament, which was called the Septuagint for the number 70, after its translators, not after the Hebrew authors. E.J. Goodspeed, Matthew, Apostle and Evangelist, pages 105 and 106 is where you get that information. Thus, Papias is understood to mean that Matthew recorded by shorthand the discourses of Yahshua in Aramaic and later drew upon these when he composed his Greek gospel. Though it is surely possible that Mark was written first and may have been available to Matthew, there was no slavish use of this shorter gospel by Matthew. And many have argued for the complete independence of the two books. The date of Matthew's gospel must be prior to A.D. 70, for there is no hint in it that Jerusalem was in ruins, all predictions of its destruction being clearly prophetic. Such passages as 27 verse 8, unto this day, and 28 verse 15, unto this day, argue for an interval of some length, but 15 or 20 years following the resurrection would be sufficient. Much attention is given to, this is special emphasis, much attention is given to demonstrating that Yeshua fulfilled, which would be Yahweh bin Yahweh, Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nusufi Wafe, fulfilled messianic prophecy. And thus was Israel's Messiah who would establish the promised kingdom. The discourses that Matthew records at length distinguish this gospel and emphasize the principles, scope, and movement of the messianic kingdom. That's Matthew 5 through 7 and 13 and also 24 through 25. The Jewish, and it has Jewish Christians, and we know Christians is a term that really takes you back to those that are followers of the Messiah. Okay, so when we say that, we understand we're speaking about the Hebrews. It says Jewish. There was no letter J. All right, so we're going to go back to the word Hebrews here. The Hebrews, who numbered in the thousands in the early church, Acts 2, verse 41 and 47, Acts 4, verse 4, Acts 5, verse 14 and 28, uh, 6, verse 1 and 7, were given an authoritative explanation that faith in Yahshua, Yudhe Beit Nun Sophie, Yudhe Wafi, involves no repudiation of the Old Testament. 
but was the very goal toward which the Old Testament revelation pointed. Outline. The birth, one, the birth and childhood of Yeshua, Christ. That's chapter 1, verse 1 through 2, verse 23. Two, the beginnings of the ministry of Yeshua Christ. That's chapter 3, verse 1 through 4, verse 11. Three, the ministry of Yeshua Christ. That's chapter 4, verse 12 through 25, verse 46. Four, the passion of Yeshua Christ. That's chapter 26, verse 1 through 27, verse 66. Five, the resurrection of Yeshua Christ. That's chapter 28, verse 1 through 20. Now, St. Matthew has 28 chapters, 1,071 verses, and 23,684 words. And this concludes the reading of the introduction of, for the book of Matthew. And now, royal family, we're going to get into the reading of Matthew chapter 9. I'm now going to move into the Hebrew Greek Key Study Bible for this. And we're moving with chapter 9, and you can certainly follow along with me as, as I read. Verse 1. And he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of palsy, lying on a bed. <clears throat> and Yeshua, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, and this is in red lettering, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be Forgiven thee. Verse 3. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth. And Yeshua, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee? or to say, arise and walk. Verse 6, But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. And this is in parentheses. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, back to the red lettering, arise, Take up thy bed and go unto thine house. Verse 7. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, Yudhe which had given such power unto men. We're on verse 9, Matthew 9, verse 9. And as Yeshua passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom. And he saith unto him, in red lettering, follow me. Okay. And he arose and followed him. And it came to pass, as Yeshua sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners, came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Yahshua heard that he said unto them, when he heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Verse 13. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. 
For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Verse 14. Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees Pharisees fast oft, but they but thy disciples fast not. And Yeshua said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them. And they shall fast. No man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment, for that which is put in to fill it up taketh from the garment, and the rent is made worse. Verse 17. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles. Else, the bottles break, and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. Verse 18. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Yahshua arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman, which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. Verse 21, for she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Yudhewape, Beit Yusuf Yudhewape, turned him about. And when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Yudhewafe, Beit Yusuf Yudhewafe, came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. <clears throat> and they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. And the fame hereof went abroad all that land. Verse 27. And when Yudhewafe, Beit Sophia Yudhewafe, departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him and said, Yudhewafe, Beitnu Sophie Yudhewafe saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord, Yudhewafe, Beitnu Sophie Yudhewafe. Verse 29. Then touched he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened, and Yudhewafe, Beitnus of Yudhewafe, straightly charged them, saying, see that no man know it. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad his fame in all that country. Verse 32, as they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man possessed with a devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake, 
And the multitudes marveled, saying, it was never so seen in Israel. Verse 34. But the Pharisees said, he casteth out devils through the prince of the devils. And Yute Wafe, Baitan Sophie Wafe, went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Verse 37, then saith he unto his disciples, red lettering, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Verse 38, pray ye therefore, the Lord, you say, of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers in his harvest. And that concludes the reading of Matthew chapter 9. And now, Royal Family, we're going to move into the 10-step study. And before we do, Royal Family, we do want to let you know that if you do not yet have your 10-step study scale, you can get it today by visiting us at www.yahweh144000.com. That's www.yahweh, spelled Y-A-H-W-E-H, 144000.com. When you get there, scroll down through uh, on the first page, scroll all the way down to where you see the solar calendar. And when you get to the solar calendar, you're going to download the solar calendar. On that solar calendar, we do have the daily scriptures for each day of the of the month, each day. Uh, and we do have 12 months on our solar calendar of 30 days. And that's 360. Then we have an additional five days from sundown to sundown, making the 365 days in our solar year. We go from sundown to sundown. So when you see the dates on the calendar, understand that that is starting at sundown. Even these scriptures are coming in at sundown along with our day. All right, so right behind the 365th day, right behind that 12th month and the 365th day, the next page is the 10-step scale. And that's what you'll utilize now that you'll have the daily scriptures for your reading. You'll have the 10-step scale. Now, while you're on our site, go on and browse with confidence. We have other things there. We have books written by the Honorable Yud Hey Wav Hey, Baton and Sophie Yud Hey Wav Hey. We are sure that if you're enjoying his messages, you're going to want his books. These books are going to give you the information and knowledge that you're going to need as we move forward now in the tree of life. We need these instructions as we come out of the tree of good and evil. We want to stop breaking the laws, and he has written these books for our benefit. So you definitely know that you want to go on and get all of these books. All right, they're available in download, most of them, as well as you can order a copy to come to your home. All right, Royal Family, we also have other products there. We have um, organic products. We have soaps, and we have elderberry syrup. We have skin moisturizing cream, hair, um, hair food also. And so visit us and go on and shop, like we say, with confidence. And we also have some audios that you haven't heard because these audios weren't placed on YouTube. So you might want to go and download some of those as well. All right? Well, family, we do have another site, www.universityofyahweh.org. Now, this site, though it was designed with uh, parents and prospective teachers in mind who want to homeschool their, their children, it is also a very good site for the adult learner. If you are new to this information, or even if you're not new and just want some structure to the way that you are taking in this information, then we certainly suggest that you enroll in this 
online self-paced platform where you can get the support that you need when you need it. All right, royal family, if you're needing a spiritual home, we certainly invite you to join us. If this just makes perfect sense to you, what you're hearing, it fits well, and it's logical to you, then we certainly invite you to join us. You can go on and you can tie with us too right here. This is how we grow, Royal Family. Anything that you purchase on the site helps go towards the building of our holy Hebrew nation of Yudhe Wabhe. And when you're tithing with us, sending in your offerings and your donations with us, this helps us to grow as family. And so we certainly invite you to do that. You can do that right there on the site at www.yahweh144000. Dot com. You can do it right there. This is in keeping with Malachi, chapter 3, verses 6 through 10. You can also send it in, Royal Family. If you prefer to mail in um, those donations, those tithes, those offerings, you can do that by mailing it into Yahweh's Royal Priesthood Publishing Company. That's 1746 East Silver Star Road. That's Suite 144, Ocoee, Florida, Ocoee is O-C-O-E-E, Florida. The zip code is 34761. All right, Royal Family, we certainly invite you home. We're going to move back into our 10-step scale now, and we're going to start off with step number one on the scale. And it says Bible, Wisdom, Proverbs 4, 7. Okay, so we know that this is the book of wisdom. The Bible the book of wisdom. Let's turn to Proverbs 4, 7 and see what we have to do with this wisdom. And it reads, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. So here we see that we also need to get understanding understanding to go along with this wisdom. So we read from this Bible on a daily basis. This is our daily bread. So when we eat from this book of wisdom, we have to make sure we get the understanding with this meal. All right, so that's what we're doing with this 10-step scale. We're going to get the understanding. It's very important. Without this understanding, we could still break the laws of our Father and be punished. There are consequences whether you know the law or you don't know the law. Best to learn it. And so we go through this Bible on a daily basis so that we can, you know, have good understanding of our laws and what our Father wants us to do. Our only purpose here is to serve him. And so let's get understanding of what it is that we are supposed to do. That's very important. We want the blessings now. We've had the curses. We've had the both. And we now understand that we just want the blessings, and that comes from the tree of life and understanding on a daily basis. All right. So what we have to do for step A on uh, for part one of step A is locate and select the scripture in the King James Version, excuse me, the KJV. This is our Bible of choice, King James Version. This 10-step scale has been designed to go hand in hand with the King James Version. So we certainly encourage that you use the King James Version for this particular study. All right, so we have located the scripture for today. And that scripture comes from from Matthew, Matthew chapter 9, verses 37 through 38. All right, so this is, these are the scriptures that we've selected for today's study. And we're going to study, we're going to move into step number two. We're going to read this in a moment, but let's move into step number two and see what we're going to do with this scripture. And step two says, decode English translation of the words with the concordance. Okay. The Old Testament words uh, are, was originally, was originally, Old Testament words were originally written in Hebrew. So we're not in the Old Testament right now for today. But had we been in the Old Testament, we would end up in the Hebrew dictionary of the concordance that we have to have the concordance. And we would have an upright number associated with whatever word of study we've selected. Today we're in the New Testament, and so we're going to end up in the Greek Dictionary of the Concordance because the New Testament was originally written in Greek. And so we're going to go back now and find out and get more understanding of this Greek word that was um, that was used when they were using when they make when they you know wrote the New Testament. Okay, so the 
italicized number will be associated with whatever word we selected for our study today. The italicized number as opposed to the upright number. The upright numbers remind you that you're in the Hebrew dictionary from the Old Testament words. Today, we're in the New Testament, the Greek word, so we'll see an italicized number with our word of study. Today, our word of study is the word laborers. Laborers. We'll be taking a, little, a closer look now. I know you may understand it on that, you know, level uh, that we, you know, without going into the dictionaries, what a laborer is. We're going to go a little bit deeper today and understand what this laborer is. Okay, so let's go back now to read the scripture, Matthew chapter nine, verse thirty-seven through thirty-eight, and the word is going to be laborers. And it reads, verse 37, the harvest truly is plenteous. And remember, this is red lettering. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord Yudhe Wapi of the harvest that ye will send forth laborers into his harvest. All right, so the word is laborers. Now we're going to go into the concordance for step number two and find out what does labor, what are, is there any other information that we should know about this word laborer? All right, so let's go to the concordance. And the concordance is, an, is, a, is a reference to one of the study tools that you will want to have in your personal library, all right? And the concordance is a kind of a large reference tool, and all the words in the Bible are in there in alphabetical order. And so we're going to go to the, where the, to the L's where laborer would be found, and we're going to look for that word laborers, and we're going to get the number, that italicized number that's associated with the word laborers, that italicized number will lead us into the Greek dictionary in the back of the concordance where we'll find the word for laborers in Greek with the understanding of the meaning of that word. All right, so when you go to the concordance, you look for the word laborers, and when you find it, there'll probably be several entries there, and you'll have to scroll through and get the word labors that you need from the scripture that we're studying from. We're just studying from Matthew 9, 37 and 38. So that number that's associated with that is going to be an italicized number. And if you do this correctly, you should get the number, italicized number 2040. Now 2040 will be italicized. We're going to take this number to the back. And now there are two dictionaries back there, so do be careful. There is the Hebrew Chaldee Dictionary for the Old Testament. That's the first dictionary that you'll come up on. And the one right behind it is the Greek Dictionary. That's where we want to be today, in the Greek Dictionary, with this italicized number 2040. Be careful, because if you go to the, the wrong dictionary, the Hebrew, you're going to get Another meaning that's not the meaning for this particular word that we're studying right now. So we definitely want to make sure we're in the Greek dictionary. It's very easy to go to the other dictionary and, and get the information from the other uh, dictionary. So you don't want to waste time doing that. So make sure you're in the Greek dictionary. And when you get there, 2040. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be your number, though there are other publishers of concordances, and it's very possible there could be another number there, but I'm pretty sure that, you know, most of you will have 2040, if not all of you, when you go looking. All right, so, and what does it mean? Because we want to remember, we want to know what this labor is. There are few laborers. We want to know, and there's, there's a prayer now for laborers. So what is this, um, what does this word mean? We want to pray for these laborers. A toiler, T-O-I-L-E-R. A teacher. What? A laborer is a teacher. A laborer. Worker. Worker men. And it tells you that it's from another number. It's from another italicized number, 2041. And the word for laborers in Greek was ergate, just in case I didn't, I didn't say that. Ergate. E-R-G-A-T-E. 
for the pronunciation ergate. Now, we're going to have to go to another number. It says 2041. That will be step number three. So let's find out what step number three tells us. So, so far, we're finding out it's a toiler, a teacher, a laborer, a worker, a worker, men. And when I think of the word worker men, I remember 2 Timothy 2.15, where we have to be workmen. You know, so this is studying. This labor seems to me that you're going to be toiling and laboring and teaching in the word of our Father. This is what... I get when I see these definitions here. It's taking me to another level of understanding because you think of a laborer, you, don't, you may not have thought of a laborer as also a teacher and a workerman, which is those that study uh, in this Bible, that's, as we're commanded to do, to study so that we are not ashamed and we can rightly what? Divide the word of truth. Why would we have to divide the word of truth? Why? Because there's truth, but it's surrounded by falsehoods. You see, that tree of good and evil, that's what it reminds you. And you've got to pull out the truth from this, which is what the Messiah had to come. He's the teacher. He had to come to teach us and give us a way that we could gain this understanding. All right, let's go to step number three. Gather additional original information is what step three says. It says pursue roots and other Hebrew or Greek words numerically denoted as the definition indicates. Okay, so when we were in step two, the definition from 2040 did indicate another number, another italicized number, 2041. So we're going to have to pursue this Greek root that was denoted. All right, so that's what step three is. So then let's go to the italicized number, 2041. We're right there at it. We we're just at 2040. What does 2041 tell us? It says to work. Okay, so we're not going to get around it. We have to work at this. We're not going to just get into heaven and just sit right down. We're going to have to work. This is a mind thing. You've got to get that mind going, and it's going to be through studying and laboring, toiling even. And it says to work, toil, as an effort or occupation. Wow. So now this work, this laboring that we're going to be doing, and I see it in the Word, this laboring that we're going to be doing in the Word, studying and dividing of this truth, is going to be one of our new occupations. If it hasn't been your occupation, this is something to consider. This new occupation, working for our Father, yud Wafe, getting that mind ready and prepared to do His will. That's what I'm seeing so far, just on step number three. All right. Well, let's move into step number four. Step number four says consult the lexicon for greater latitude on the original information. The numbers are identical to the concordance numbers. Okay, so now we need another tool in our personal library, and it's called the lexicon. There are two of them because you have the lexicon for the Old Testament, which is the Hebrew Chaldee lexicon, and then you also have the Greek English lexicon for the New Testament. That's the one we're going to need today. All right? So be careful as to which one you're choosing. Just like in the concordance, there were two dictionaries, there are two lexicons. So when you grab your lexicon, make sure you're grabbing the correct one. If not, you're going to waste a little time, and I do it, and I still do it often. But, you know, I catch myself, but I just want to remind you that it's really very easy to do. And so pay attention and get the, today we're in the Greek English lexicon. All right? We're going to, the numbers are identical, so we're going to go now for 2040, the italicized number 2040. And let's see what the lexicon has to add to what we need. Now here, when you're going into getting this information, remember, always ask our Father, yud Wafi for the guidance as we move through this because he is the Word and he knows what he wants us to have. A lot of times when you get into the study here, you're going to get information that might not be as pertinent um, as other information. So you want him to be the guide that leads you as to rightly pulling out what you need. Okay, so when I got into 2040, I pulled out this information I'm about to share with you now from 2040. It says, oh, workmen, 
laborer. Remember, these are these the, the, and the laborers are few. Remember, so these workmen, these are those of us that are studying now according to our father methodology. We're pretty few, okay. And but we have to pray now that we want more workmen because there's a there's a lot of harvest to gather, and so you know we we need more of ourselves. We're, we're really looking for the 144,000 of us that want to do this type of work, this occupation right here. A workman, a laborer, an agricultural laborer. You know, there's a harvest of the mines. Those who whose labor artificers employ craftsmen. And so when you think of an artificer, you think of those that create jobs, inventors, skillful workers, or artificers. artificers. So, and those that employ craftsmen, okay? We're looking for those craftsmen. Those, it says, who as teachers, here we go, teachers, labor to propagate and promote, and right here I'm going to say, you hear why I say, Satan is Sophie, teachings, among men. And we know man and men means minds. So we're promoting the teachings. We have to become teachers. But you can't become a teacher if you haven't had an opportunity to meet the teacher. And the teacher is our father. The teacher is the knowledge from the tree of life. The teacher is the law. The law is our schoolmaster. That's a scripture. So we have to learn the law. We have to learn from our father, Yudhe before we can teach anyone else, okay? And we have to teach what he taught us. All right. So this is what I'm getting. Those that propagate and promoting the teachings. They had Christian uh, in in, in the book, um, and we know that a Christian is really what it really means when you study is a follower of Christ, and we know that Christ leads you to the word Mashiach, and that's Messiah. So we're speaking of the teachings of the Messiah, Yudhe Wate, Beit Nusofi Yudhe Wate. Just wanted to remind you, this is how we look at it from this standpoint. All right, let's go to the other number, 2041, also italicized. Let's see what the lexicon has to say about this number, 2041. And it says, work, there it is again, we have to work. Business, okay? Our Father taught us there's much business in Judah. So there's work to be done, businesses to uh, to implement. Employment, we have to employ. We become business owners, and then we become employers, employment. That with which anyone is occupied. And now we understand we have to occupy ourselves with the knowledge of our father, yud Hey wav Hey. We want to occupy, we want to go on because we have to seek the kingdom of yud Hey wav Hey first. We've been doing things backwards. With the tree of good and evil, we did things backwards. And now when we're in the tree of life, we have to occupy our minds. He taught us to keep our minds stayed on him. And then he will give us what he wants us to do. When we communicate with that, with him, we get these daily messages, he lets you know what he wants you to do. Remember, you're not just working for you, you're working for our Father. We're doing business for him. We're employing ourselves in his business. We're about our Father's business. Okay, it says the work of salvation committed by Yudhe Wafe to Yudhe Wafe, Satan and Sophie Yudhe Wafe. The work to be done by the apostles, the teachers. And it has Christian teachers. Again, we know these are the followers of the Messiah. Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nusofi Wafe. We are the teachers, teaching what he has taught us so that the world can have an opportunity to be blessed. It's a service which one does. We have to do a service, and the service is for our Father. Okay, perform the service that one does, performs or ought to perform. See, what do we, we ought to perform? And when you look up the word ought, it expresses the duty or moral obligation. See, we have a moral 
obligation to perform according to our Father's divine will. We are here for his purpose. And when we decide to commit ourselves to his purpose, he will make it plain and clear what we need to do. It says, any product, whatever, anything accomplished by hand, it says art, industry, and mind. And this, again, is a mind thing. This is all about developing that tabernacle, our mind, so that we can perform the duty that we ought to perform, those moral obligations. And then we can produce whatever it is that our Father has us to produce. Your talent, our Father taught us our talent is in our holy Hebrew name. So as you study your holy Hebrew name, you're connecting with the talent that he placed within you, and you're able to show it forth and bring it forth. And you'll prosper with what he's given. He's given all of us a talent. And you can probably look at your life and see what you've been doing for most of your life. That talent may be what he placed there. But now you've got to take those talents and you've got to bring them forth for the building of our holy Hebrew nation. Uh, my talent, I know one of the talents that he's given me is um, the talent to be a teacher. I taught in the, in the outside world close to 30 years. But I understand that that gift that he's given me is for his use only. And so now I pull in my skills and I use them for the building of the nation, of the holy nation of Yudhe My only thing I want to do now is to work for him. So whatever I knew how to do, I bring it here now. You bring your talents together, and then we build as one. So whatever business it is, we have to incorporate and make it about our father's business to grow as family. All right, royal family, that was step number four. Let's move into step number five, and it says, define Hebrew and or Greek definitions of the original word or words selected in step one by use of the dictionaries. Okay, so now here's where we get a chance to define some of these definitions that we wrote down from the original word. The original word was laborers. One of the definitions it's business, and our father told us there's much business in Judah. So I want to go ahead and take a look at the business because the businesses are few. We have few businesses that have our father, yud Wave in mind. And so now we've got to take a look at whatever it is we're doing, and we have to develop those businesses that we can bring together and enjoy and um, the, you know, efforts from all of our efforts that, is, that will build now the kingdom of yud Wave. So let's take a look at the word business. Let's go to the American heritage. It says the occupation, work, or trade in which a person is engaged. So you may be engaged in a particular business. You might have your own business that you've created on your own. Wonderful. So how do you make that work for you, Hewafe? Well, one of the things that you do is for keeping up the law. Malachi 3, 6 through 10. You're profiting from your business? Okay, well, our Father says that 10% comes to him. Okay, and so you can go on now and you can contribute to the building that way. That's one way. There are so many ways, but this is how you tie it in to this study, your occupation and your work. How does it apply to our Father? That's just one way. A specific occupation or pursuit, commercial, industrial, or professional dealings, okay, Tie that into the growth of our nation. A commercial enterprise, affair, matter, enterprise or establishment, volume or amount of commercial trade, commercial dealings, patronage, one's rightful or proper concern or interest. 
and your rightful, proper concern, found in your name, serious work or endeavor, an affair or matter. That came from American heritage. You could always take these words and further define or gain synonyms in your study. I'm just moving through because for time, I want to get through these. For the sake of time, I want to get through these 10 steps within a certain amount of time. I'm going to go to the Merriam-Webster's now for the word business. And it says purposeful activity, particular field or endeavor. So he's, each one of us have different talents. Your holy Hebrew name has in, within it different talents. We don't all do the same thing. Whatever our Father has given you, that's your particular field. But it all needs to be about our Father, Yudhi Wabi. That's the common, the common thread right there. It's all for the growth of our nation. Trade line, commercial or industrial enterprise, economic dealings, personal concern, a serious activity requiring time and effort and usually avoidance of distractions. And I know when we study, we definitely want to avoid those distractions. This is one of our new occupations. If you haven't been doing this, this is one of the new occupations that you want to go ahead and put in your day somewhere because this is seeking the kingdom of Yudhe Wafe first. I say to put it first in your day before you begin anything else. But, of course, you'll have to decide where it best fits in your schedule, but you definitely want to get it in. Let's go to the random house for the word business. And it says an occupation profession or trade, a profit-seeking enterprise. And you definitely want it to be profit-seeking because that's what you pay your tenth on, on your profit. You're not going to pay on your losses. You want to pay on your profit. So you definitely want it to be about our Father and you want to be able to, um, you want to, be able to contribute and you want it to be profit-seeking. Whatever you do, you want to make a profit. All right. It's a source of profit-seeking enterprise or concern, trade, or patronage. We also want to patronize our businesses. So on our website at www.yahweh144000.com, you will also see other businesses there that have websites that you can patronize when you get there. We have several others there. And if you have a business and you are a part of our organization and you have a website, let us know. We would love to connect your righteous business to our site so that we can begin to patronize each other's businesses as family. All right. It says a person's principal concern of a, of a suitable suitable for business, of or Suitable for business. It's got to be a suitable business. <laughs> you don't want to have something that, you know, is against our law. So it's got to be a righteous enterprise. Whatever you're doing, let it be righteous. Let it be following the laws of our Father, yud heh wah Okay, that's what we got from the dictionary. Let's move into step number six. <clears throat> step six is consult several dictionaries and compare. Include Bible dictionary and Bible interpreter's dictionary. All right, so we're going to go to the vines. We're going to take the number 2040, that italicized number for the Greek word ergate, and we're going to go to the vines. We're going to go into the index. So I'm not going to look up the word <clears throat> business or laborers. I'm going to go look for the number 2040. That's the, the, word, the number that's going to give us the information. No matter what word it says, it's going to be the information that we need. So when we get there, it does say work. Can't get around this work. Laborer, workman, it says indicates one skilled in the knowledge of God, Yudhewafe's word. Now, they probably had God there, and I know God is Yahweh, so it is one who is skilled in the knowledge. And this is what we're doing now. We're making ourselves become skilled workers in the knowledge of of the word, utilizing the methodology of study. This is what we're becoming. And not just we're sitting here studying this and not going to apply it. One of the definitions of study is application. So we have to take whatever it is that we're studying and we have to apply it on a daily basis. We become like our Father. We become this word that we're studying. All right. That's what I gathered from the vines. Um, that's what I pulled out from 2040. 
let's move into step number seven, which is define Hebrew and or Greek definitions of the original word or words selected in step one by use of the synonym finder. All right, so I'm going to use the J.I. Rodell synonym finder. You can also bring in your thesaurus right here. <clears throat> you can utilize whatever synonym finder you have. You can use online sources as well. I'm going to use the J.I. Rodell. I've given some, have some synonyms here that I pulled out for the word business, which comes from laborers, but we're few with this. So we're, we're looking for these businesses to begin to develop, okay? And this occupation. Well, we know one of the occupations is studying this word of our fathers, but that's a new occupation for some of us. But this is an occupation that we need to have, and we need to be first about doing this first. And as we said, this occupation, whatever occupation you have, you still can connect it to our father by contributing your tenth there. So whatever occupation it is. Okay, this is how we do this as family. All right, profession, whatever profession you have. Okay, it still can be tied in some way. You have to tie it in to our father's business. Vocation, following, calling. See, he's calling. Are we going to heed the call? Pursuit. Our pursuit should be about doing what our father wants us to do. Industry, we have to develop industry, enterprise, ventures, selling, promoting, promoting, share this audio, share all of these classes, this video, share it, promote it. It's our, it says duty. It's our duty to do this, to promote. Responsibility. It says shop, store, establishment, partnership. We've got to become partners. It says team. We want to be on the same team. Team Yahweh doing his righteous work. It says obligation. These are some of the synonyms that we found from this, which you can further study, get more clarity. Let's move into that special note that comes right before step number eight. And it says always ask yourself the question, is this study beneficial to me? If the answer is yes, Continue on. If the answer is anything but yes, discontinue and start on something that will be beneficial. Our Father wants our work to be beneficial. So we don't want to waste any time in something that's not going to promote and help us grow. So you ha this is where you get to self-evaluate right here. This is where you get to assess your studies right here. You can do it throughout, but this is just a reminder right here. Is this going to be beneficial? What are you going to do with this information? Are you going to become these words here? Is this beneficial? Can you become these words? How do I become these words? You know, what can I do? Is this beneficial? Well, yes, it is beneficial because now we're seeing that whatever occupation we do, we must put our father in there. It must be all about him. He will make your business flourish even more. That's what he's come to do. He's come to help us to grow and flourish, become wealthy in all areas of life. So put him in. So, yes, it's beneficial. We're seeing how we can support whatever we're doing. We still can support. All right. We can support the growth of our holy Hebrew nation. So this is beneficial. You know, we're finding that the laborers are few, so we've got to share these, these audios because this is a part of that agricultural <laughs> occupation. We're planting seeds here. These seeds are planted into the minds of men, the minds of the people. And so then this seed will have the opportunity to grow and flourish, and produce more. So this is beneficial. Step number eight says, return to the original scripture in the Bible and read it with a new understanding. All right, let's go back to Matthew chapter 9, verses 37 and 38, and it reads, Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous. See, there's a lot of people out there that need this information. The harvest is plenteous. 
But the laborers are few. There's just a few of us right now that are willing to allow our Father to uh, flourish within us and this information. It's just a few of us that understand this. And so our job is we've got to pray for the laborers that will come and help to plant these seeds in the minds. And so we're hoping that as you're hearing this message, you're saying, I'm going to work. I'm going to be one of those laborers. I'm going to help with this harvest, with the gathering in of the righteous people, those that want to do well, out of all nations, okay? The harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye, therefore, the Lord, you hear what I say, of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers unto his harvest. And we see that the laborers are coming in. And we want to continue to pray. And make sure that the laborers continue to come to help with this plentiful harvest. Yahweh bin Yahweh taught us that there is much business in Judah. Our occupation, our trade is about the growth of our holy nation of Yudhe This is that serious activity requiring study time and effort, that new occupation. On a daily basis, it's our daily bread. Remember, we are to seek the kingdom of Yudhe Wafe first. First, royal family, <laughs> not second, first. Then, then and only then will all things be added. See, he's looking to see, are we going to get this order right? He's first. This study is first. We have to get this part right, royal family. There's a lot of work to do. We are to be those workmen studying to do our Father's business. Praise you, Tehwate. Praise you, Tehwate. Thank you, Sophie. You, Tehwate. Let's move into step number nine, which is search the scriptures, John 5, 39. Look for helpful course references in several Bibles. Crack the codes with the newfound information. All right, here's where you need a Bible that does have course references. Check to see if your Bible has course references. Now, sometimes your Bible will have course references, but maybe not for that particular scripture. But as long as you have course references, that's a good thing. We want your Bible to have course references. We don't want you to miss step right here or in any of these steps. All right, so let's take a look at Luke chapter 10, verse 2. It's really very much similar. If it's not the same, it says, Therefore said he unto them, The harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye, therefore, the Lord Yehovah of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers unto the harvest. Okay, so the difference here, it says plenteous in one scripture, the harvest is truly plenteous. Here it says it's great, and that's still a good word. But it's pretty much the same wording. The information that we gathered for um, here from the other scripture can be applied here just the same with the same regards to the laborers. Okay, John forty, John four thirty five. Let's take a look at that. Thank you, Queen. John four thirty five. Uh, Queen, I'm gonna. Um, are you able to read John four four thirty five and thirty six? Yes. Yeah. Okay, please do. John 4.35, say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest? Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the field, for they are white, all ready to harvest. Mm. 36, and he that reapeth, receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal. Both he that soweth, and he that reapeth, may rejoice together. Praise you, they will. Look at that. We get to rejoice. The fields are ready to be, you know, to be harvested. And then look what the re- look what the rewards are. You you're going to receive the wages from our Father Yudhe and gather the fruit of life unto life eternal. See, working for our Father Yudhe gives us eternal life. What a reward! Don't you want eternal life? Don't you want the wages from our Father? He is well able to support and take care of us. So let's go on and take his seeds, put them out there, 
Let them grow and flourish, and then let's gather them in. This is what our Father has chosen and selected for us to do. Praise you, Tewafe. Tell the Queen for those scriptures. All right. Let's move into step number 10. Step 10 says, keep an open mind. Now, that's important. You've got to keep an open mind. That means you want to preserve, protect, and guard that mind. It's open now to the ways of our Father, Yudhe Wate. We want to be able to now go on and enter in, access and reach that information that he has for us on a daily basis. <clears throat> we want to, though the mind is open, we want to become impermeable and impenetrable to the ways of Satan, the tree of good and evil. We don't want to bring in any of that clutter and any of those obstructions from that tree. We want to have a clear path. And so we're going to keep that mind open to our Father. We're going to use any of these given tools at any given time if necessary. Okay? Let you, hey, Wap, hey, guide you. There is no better guide. Let him guide you. He's the word. You, hey, Wap, hey, bait new, so feed you, Wap, he comes in the volume of the book. And that's so good to know. He's in every single book there. The 66 books of the King James Version, he's in every single one of those. That's Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. That's Psalm chapter 40, verse 7. So good to know. No matter what book you're in, he's there. No matter what chapter you're reading, whether it's the scheduled readings or one that he's moved you to read on his own for you to read for your particular message, he's in there for us. Okay? No matter what verse you've selected to study even closer, he's in the verse. Why? He is in the Word. And so being that he's in the Word, he is the perfect guide for us. All right, royal family, we certainly hope that this has been beneficial to your understanding. We're hoping that you understand now that all that you do in your occupation, in your efforts, in your study, in your business, whatever it is, that you're doing. You learn to connect it so that it is benefiting our nation as a whole. And so now we are ready to move into and ask King Yismaya if you will lead us out with prayer. King Yismaya? And hold on, hold on. There you are. Hold on. There you are. Okay, King Yismaya, will you lead us with prayer? Yes, Queen. Praise Yerewabe. And praise Yerewabe, Beit Nun Sophi Yerewabe. Okay, royal family, let us stand and face the east with our hands spread from whence we came. Tefillah. Avenu, Sabasemayim, Yikadas, Samarika, Tarbo, Ma Kutek, Yorse, Razanka, Kabasemayim, Kang Baretz, Elokim, Kuganu, Kainlanu, Hayon, Uslaklanu, Al Kataram, Kimup Solakim, Gamanatnu, Lagotemlanu, Vel, Tebenu, Liade, Nisayon, Kim, Kasinu, Mihara, Kilaka, Hamamlaha, Bahagivara, Bahateferet, Lame, Olamim, Selah. And we thank thee, O Heavenly Father, Yude Wave, our eternal and everlasting King who has so mercifully restored our souls within us. And let everything that has breath praise Yudhi Wabe, and praise Yudhi Wabe, Beit Nun Sofit Yudhi Wabe, the Messiah, Selah. Praise Yudhi Wabe, and praise Yudhi Wabe, Beit Nun Sofit Yudhi Wabe. Absolutely. That's what we're going to do. Praise Yudhi Wabe, and praise Yudhi Wabe, Beit Nun Sofit Yudhi Wabe. Royal family, have a glorious day. In you, hey, wav, hey. I love you, royal family. Shalom uvraka, which means peace and blessings, royal family. Shalom. Shalom.